and you are watching What's On My Face where I tell you everything that's on my face for this week's episode of What's Been Makeup. I'm also gonna tell you what's on my shirt. This is the shirt that I designed. I drew this on a piece of paper and then I edited it into a heart shape. And it says Mad Love, Jen Loves Reviews. These are available on cafepress.com. I really make a very, very small percentage. I think I make a 10% commission off things. So please don't think this is a huge money maker for me. It's just something fun that I did for our community. There's the Mad Love design. There's the Collective Brain of Makeup Awesomeness and then there are things for the Paralas, my friends that are on Periscope, um, and definitely check that stuff out. We got phone cases and shirts and all kinds of cool stuff, so just search for Jen Lowe's reviews on Cafe Press or What's Been Makeup to find the merchandise. It's just a lot of fun. Coffee mugs, stuff like that. Oh, so this video is typically only available on whatsupinmakeup.com. This week is the week that it shows up on the channel, so if you'd like to see more episodes of this, go ahead to whatsupinmakeup.com and go to the exclusive content. You'll see previous episodes of What's On My Face there. So now let's go ahead and go into what's on my face. We're going to start where I started, which is face primer. I started off with my Laura Mercier face primer, Radiance. I really like this face primer. It's nothing like magical. I don't feel like it really gives me a lot of radiance that shines through the foundation. I feel like if you're going to use something that's really light coverage, then it might make a difference as far as, uh, you know, the, the radiance aspect of it. Um, show you there. It's more of kind of a wet look, but if you're just going to put foundation over it, it kind of disappears. Like you can see the only radiance that I have right now really is the highlight that I have on. Uh, so, I mean, it's fine. It's a nice face primer. Definitely keeps my makeup on much, much longer, uh, but it's definitely not a must buy for me. And for foundation, I had to try this again. This is the Physicians Formula Mineral Wear Talc Free All-in-One ABC Cushion Foundation SPF 50 in light medium. I just put up a review of this. It wasn't really a review. It was more of like a try-on demo kind of thing, kind of giving you the opportunity to see how it wore on me. Um, I threw some cool music in the background, and it was more like I was kind of testing a format out. And what I learned from about 25 people was that I applied it incorrectly. So, I mean, you can see the way that it looks based on the application that I did. Um, but what I can tell you is I did decide that I was going to pat it on today. I also did two layers of it instead of one, and it did build up to a lighter to medium coverage when I did two layers. I might have been able to build it up more, but I personally don't like that look, so I didn't. Um, but it, it might have been able to build up to more. Um, I did only use the sponge today, and I did it in a padding motion. I do really like that much better using it in the padding motion rather than the swiping motion. But, you know, you live and you learn. I do still feel like the the uh, the review is valid. The application of it is valid because that's what it looks like when you apply it that way. But there are other ways to apply it. So look for this foundation to show up again in videos on my channel. I'm probably going to put the Lumi, uh, test it against the, the L'Oreal Lumi one. I did order that from Ulta, so hopefully we'll see that soon. But so far, I mean, even the way that I swiped it on, I really like that for a day-to-day -day coverage. It feels very nice on the skin. It's kind of watery. Uh, it's definitely not a thick foundation in any way. Um, and I do, I do like the way that it applies overall. Even when I do do a light application, I really enjoy the way it evens my skin tone. So that's kind of my opinion on this at this point. I do still want to play with a little bit more. I'm sure you'll see this again sometime soon on the channel though. I watched a bunch of videos on the Cushion Foundation formula and they recommended and everything that I read and everything I saw to put on your concealer after you put on the Cushion Foundation. So today I used my Eve Pearl Dual Salmon Concealer and I used the deeper shade here. This is the shade Fair Light and I used the deeper shade today. I really like the way that this looks. I love the coverage of it and it is a salmon color so it does cancel out the uh, any kind of purpleness uh, you know, dark circles. It's got like that peachy salmon color. Uh, and, and it's very, very nice concealer. It is a bit pricey, but if you're looking for a good canceling out um, blueness under your eyes. I definitely recommend trying this out as a concealer um, cor slash corrector. Um, I, I can see it being used for both. I use it personally as a concealer rather than a corrector though. 
Okay, then I went straight into eyes and I used to put a lid on an eye primer by the ball. I just looked up the ingredients of this primer, just so you know. The first ingredient is a solvent, the second one is talc, and the third one is an emollient. So the, there's no silicone in the first three ingredients, but talc a lot of people are very sensitive to, so just be aware of that if you want to get this. I do feel like it keeps my eyeshadow on longer, but not as long as some of my other primers. So after I stopped filming last night, I realized that I really wanted to do a little more research into the ingredients of the eyelid primer. So with the balm, I compared it to the e.l.f. eyelid primer. It does include five of the same ingredients as the e.l.f. eyelid primer, including the uh, first ingredient and the third ingredient. Uh, also, when I, I did decide to compare it to uh, the Too Faced Shadow Insurance, and they share the same top four ingredients and 13 ingredients overall, which is a total of 65%, where with the e.l.f. primer, it's 45%. It also shared 65% of the ingredients with the Urban Decay Primer Potion, um, and also the same first four ingredients are the same in the Urban Decay Primer Potion, so I thought that was kind of interesting to compare. Just for fun, I looked at the difference between the Too Faced and the Urban Decay, and they shared 80% of the same ingredients, including the first five ingredients in the same order, which I thought was really interesting. I had a lot of things going on in my eyes today. The first thing I used was a Coastal Scents Hot Pot in Light Taupe. This is a wonderful, wonderful hot pot. I've had a lot of questions lately on my feelings about the Coastal Scents Hot Pots. That's double swatch right there. Um, overall, I really like them. There are some hits and misses in the hot pot, but overall, I feel like they are very good. Um, and for the price, I feel like if you get a couple of misses, you know, I would say 80% of the hot pots that I own are really, really good, and then 20% are just kind of meh, like they're, they're usable, but they're not great, you know what I mean? But this happens to be a really good one. I really like this one a lot. I use this one up in my crease, up in the crease. And then I used, I wanted to try this out. This is the Coastal Scents Duo that I got in my Ipsy bag. Birch Box. I got it in my Birch Box and it is the Style Eyes eyeshadow sampler. And this was the first time I used it. I thought it was okay. It definitely swatched worse than it actually was. I was not impressed with the swatches, but then when I used it, it actually turned out pretty nice. Um, you can see that the cream shade is very powdery looking. That's one swatch. Um, but they're okay. They're all right. Um, I definitely feel like I have some Coastal Scents eyeshadows that I like better than these. I feel like the burgundy shade is a little bit chunky, but I mean, it did blend out pretty nicely, and I like the way that it looks. I have it in my outer corner a little bit blended up into the crease, and I do really like it. But then I wanted something for all over my lid, and I just got in a Julep Mystery Box. If you've never checked out the Julep Mystery Boxes, oh my gosh, they're amazing. $25. It's mystery stuff, so you never know what you're going to get. But I got like five polishes, and like, I got this eyeshadow, and a cheek product, and an eye eyeliner and a lip gloss, 25 bucks. You cannot beat it. So this is something that I got. I did use just this shade today. This one is called Broadway and it is so gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It's just like a gold, champagne -y gold color. And it's just so, so, so pretty. I'm really, really happy with For it. Right eyebrows there. today, I used my Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. This is starting to get a little bit old, but it's still hanging strong. Um, I, I really like this a lot. It's a little more difficult to work with than a powder or a pencil, but it will give you more Instagram-y brows, like those really defined brows, if you really like that. I always have to spoolie mine out because it never looks natural until I spoolie it out. So just be aware of that if you do get this. It's very, very creamy, so it makes it a little more difficult to work with, but it is a really nice product. I also use the Benefit Gimme Brow. This is very nice for people that already have filled in brows or something to use at the end after you've filled in your brows to kind of bring it all together. It's supposed to have fibers in it, but I don't feel like the fibers really do much. It is a very nice product, though. I really enjoy using it. It's just not a standalone brow product for me. It's something that I use at the end to kind of make it all work. And also it kind of helps my brows stay in place, but it doesn't have a crunchy feel like let's say the Anastasia gel brow stuff. It's like crunch city. This is definitely better than that. In For my eyeliner opinion. today, I used my Jouer Kitten Liner. I was pleasantly surprised by this. When I first opened it up, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to like it because the tip was very stiff. It has, 
does it have a brush tip or no it's a marker tip it has a very very fine point on it and it has the perfect amount of product the only thing is, is if you do have fine lines you want to keep a brush handy to blend out if it seeps into your fine lines like um like a like an angled liner brush or something like that to kind of blend out any seeping into fine lines but other than that it's really really good lasts a really long time don't wipe with the side of your eye if you made a wing though because it will wipe off even like hours later but it does stay on as long as you don't wipe your eyes it will stay on all day. It's a really nice liner. Very, very black too, which I really like. Hey, for mascara today, I was getting ready on Periscope and I was like, I'm gonna try this Ulta mascara for you because I've used it before and it's terrible. So I just wanna show you how bad it is and that's why we're gonna use it. And I ended up not hating it as much as I thought I would. I had used this two or three times before. Felt like it did absolutely nothing. This time I felt like it did a little bit more. I still don't recommend it. This is called the Legendary Lengths Lengthening Mascara by Ulta. And it's just... It's kind of weak. If you already have nice lashes, you'll probably like this. But if you have like shortness or sparseness or anything like that, it's pretty weak. There's a lot of much, much better mascaras than this one. I'll show you the wand. It's kind of that um, Too Faced Better Than Sex shape, but you can see it's very, very, very thin, thin formula. It does comb through the lashes very, very nicely, which is nice, but overall it's just not a great mascara. It's not bad. If you get it, it's like one of those deals where you can get like 10 Ulta brand products for free or something. This is one you might want to pick up, but if you're not getting, if you're spending more than like a couple bucks for it, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. This is like the julep <laughs> what's up in makeup. I use this julep cheek stick. This is called Skip the Brush and it's in Desert Rose. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous blush. It doesn't have the best staying power ever, but it's really beautiful on the cheeks. It's got that shine to it and it's really gorgeous. It's fun to work with. I can see this working on many skin tones. It's just beautiful to work with. I really enjoy it a lot. Um, I did use this without any powder first. I do feel like when you put it on over top of a powder, it can kind of give a strange finish. So I make sure before I use this that I don't put a powder on first. I put it right on top of my foundation. And I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's a nice wintry kind of color too. Um, and I just really like this product. It's super, super creamy. This is one of those kind of blushes you can throw in your purse because it's like hardcore, not gonna open up. And at least that I, I mean, it's like I'm pulling on it and I'm not getting it open. I have to like grab it with my whole hand. This would not be difficult to put on uh, when you're out on the go. So put the stripe on and then I just blend it out with my fingers. Super easy. Now for contouring today, I did use the Wet n Wild Contouring Palette. This is the new formula. I really like this a lot overall. I do feel like the bronzer in this is a bit warm. This is in Dolce, Dolce, Dolce de Leche. Yes. <laughs> Um, but I really like this. They're both extremely matte formulas. They're very, very creamy. Very creamy. There you go. So there is the bronzer. There is the highlight. It is a bit warm in the bronzer. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, it's not really the best contouring bronzer, but I mean, it's just, I don't know. I like that it's so, it's such a good formula. I just wish that they had made the shade a little more neutral and a little less warm and then I would have been super happy with it. The white shade I used to brighten my under eyes. I also used it for a little bit of brightening here and I really liked it a lot. Um, it's just, it's a little bit too warm and it makes me sad. I wanna love it, but I just don't um, as far as a contour shade. And you can also use it as eyeshadow too if you don't wanna use it as a contour. You can use it as a bronzer too. See, I'm trying to sell this because I really like the formula. I just don't love the shade. I really wanted to love it. And there's nice little directions on the back too that are just good for any time. So, just doesn't really work for this product. For highlight, my highlight of the year, the Laura Geller Baked Gelato Swirl Illuminator in Gilded Honey. This is gorgeous. It's a beautiful highlight. It is down there. Just, oh, the glow. The glow, my friends, the glow. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. Every time I put it on, it makes me go, oh. Oh, I just love it so much. And then I used for uh, finishing powder today, I used the Tarte Smooth Operator. This is a new favorite of mine. This is the pressed version. There is a loose version as well, but very, very nice finishing powder. I was a little scared because of the whiteness of it, but it definitely doesn't leave a white cast. And I feel like it just really brings everything together into one full look. You know, it brings my cheek look together. It just brings everything and just makes it look good. 
You know, it just makes my face look good and it makes me happy. All right, before I did my lips today, I, if you know me, you know I have chronically dry lips, so I constantly have to exfoliate. I used today the Tarte Maracuja Lip Exfoliant. And I think my husband, John, bought this a really long time ago. It's very, very minty, but it works really, really well. The grains are like medium to fine grains in there. Um, and it just, it works really well. It's very nice, it's moisturizing, um, and it just feels good on the lips. I really recommend this. If you can find All right, I fought with my, with my lips tonight. I fought with them. I could not figure out a lip color that looked right. I couldn't. And then my friend Valerie on Periscope was like, do you have a touch of spice by Maybelline? I was like, yes, I happen to have that. I pulled it out of my drawer. I put it on and I was like, yes, Valerie for the win. You're amazing. So because of Valerie, I found the right color for my lips. That's why I love getting ready on Periscope. If you're not following me on Periscope, it really is a lot of fun. We, we have a great time. And you guys help me and I help you and we're all just a good, happy, helping each other family. Um, but yeah, this is Touch of Spice by Maybelline. It's a matte um, and it's wonderful and I love it. It's a beautiful color. And it's still moisturizing. I mean, I've been wearing it for probably about half an hour and it still feels moist. There's no dryness at this at all. It's just, it's a wonderful lip product. Um, scent on this, it's a little bit sweet, but it's not overpoweringly sweet. It's not like the Milani ones. It's just a little bit sweet. It's not real plasticky either. It's maybe a tad plasticky, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's a really nice lipstick. And then finally, I wanted to show you my, my nail polishes that I'm wearing. I have been wearing this nail polish on my nails for almost a week. And I like, seriously, like, look how gorgeous this color is. I mean, they're not perfect anymore, but oh my gosh. This is a mix of two Julep nail polishes that I got in that mystery box. One, This one is called Hazel and this one is called Layla. Now my only concern about Layla is it's got these big like crystals in there. It's got these big rectangles. The rectangles peeled off of my nails. So like with this one right here, you can see where they've peeled off, which does not look cute but the rest of it looks cute. So what you can do if you do get this and you plan on wearing it for a long time is when the big rectangles go on your nails, just pick them off with a pair of tweezers so that they don't stay in your nails and it, it smooths itself out as long as you do it quickly enough because um, the small little flecks are gorgeous. They, you don't really need the large rectangles. So um, overall, really recommend these as a pair. I haven't worn them separately, so I can't speak to them separately, but as a pair, Oh, it looks like, you know, my old, the Ipsy bag that I got a couple months ago. That's what it reminds me of, like a night sky kind of look. It's just gorgeous. I love it. So I thank you guys so much for watching What's On My Face. That's everything I put on my face today and my nails and my shirt. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget that these are found on whatsupinmakeup.com if you enjoyed it. You can go over there to the exclusive content and see previous episodes of What's On My Face. And I give lots of mini reviews of things that I wore on my face. Or if you watch What's Up In Makeup and you see a look that you like, you can see all the products that I use so that you know. And it's nice and convenient and fabulous because that's what we're all about, is convenient. Because we want to make life easier for you. Thank you again so much for watching and mad love and I'll see you in a video very, very soon. Bye!